Well, it is uh, my great honor to present my paper at this symposium. I would like to start. It is well known that James McLean Whistler looked to Japanese art in developing an original artistic style that challenged the narrative conventions of Victorian painting and asserted his belief in art for art's sake. What is less, less well known, however, is that the connection between the painter and Japan was not a one-way street, but a complex network of cultures and aesthetic emulation. Whistler looked to Japan to effect his aesthetic transformation. After the turn of the century, Japanese artists, critics, and writers engaged in a reciprocal act of artistic appropriation. After opening up the country in 1858, Japan started to assimilate Western civilization. Modernization and Westernization were synonyms in the Meiji era. Learning Western art was a part of modernization in Japan during this time. Whistler's idea of art for art's sake and the beauty for beauty expressed in 10 o'clock lecture and the essential art of making enemies was understood as exemplary theory of avant-garde. From 1903 to 1918, Whistler was introduced not only in art magazines such as Bijutsu Shinpo, but also in literary magazines such as Waseda Bungaku and Geibun. Articles on Whistler were also published in the magazines which aimed to be a synthesis of visual art and literature, Myojo and Hosun. It shows that the reception and influence of Whistler in Japan extended not only to art, but also, and even more so, to the literary world. For instance, a book designed by Hashiguchi Goyo shows that Whistler's arrangement in black and gray portrait of Thomas Carlyle was known in Japan. Kinoshita Mokutaro subtitled his poem, inspired by Whistler's painting. Um, one of the best known poems that was inspired by Whistler's work might be Blue and Gold by Kitahara Hakushu. Sato Haruo, known as one of the writers of aestheticism in Japan, wrote in his House of Spanish Dog, On the wall hangs a helichrome sea piece. I've seen this picture before somewhere. Isn't that Whistler's coloring? Whistler's reception and influence in Japan was broadly felt on account of his being introduced in the world of literature as well as in artistic circles. Looking at some art and literature magazines that posited Whistler's importance to modern Japanese art, this paper traces how Whistler's works and his artistic ideas were introduced and understood at the dawn of modern art and literature in Japan. The arrival of American Commodore Perry in 1853 brought about the end of Japan's period of isolation. From this date on, there was genuine contact between the West and Japan. After the Meiji Restoration of 1868, Japan set out rapidly to assimilate Western culture. Civilization was a key word for the government to become a member of the Western nations. And civilization meant essentially westernization. The middle of the 19th century to the 20th century were full of social upheavals. Japanese art and literature were no exceptions. At the very early stage of westernization, Japanese learned techniques of oil painting and established a new genre called yoga 
that is Western style painting. They also learned the idea of organizing exhibitions and publishing art journals from the West. The very term bijutsu, that means fine art, was coined on the occasion of Japan's participation in the Vienna World Fair in 1873. Bijutsu was used rather broadly at the time and included music, painting, sculpture, and poems. More than a decade after the term was coined, there was an important debate to examine the concept of bijutsu. The art dealer Hayashi Tadamasa, who based his activities in Paris and played an important role in introducing Japanese art to Europe and in the cult of Japanism, was a major voice in the debate. Hayashi was also one of the personage who mentioned Whistler's artistic idea to support his understanding of bijutsu. Hayashi went to Paris, went to France in 1878 as an interpreter for the Third Paris World Fair, later becoming an art dealer based in Paris. He spoke French fluently and talked about Japanese art to French enthusiasts. Not only did he sell Japanese goods to collectors such as Ligons or Gonku brothers, but he also provided information, knowledge and advice regarding Japanese art, contributing greatly to the popularity of Japanese. Hayashi certainly had extensive contact in Europe and was also aware of a stream of the art world there. In 1887, he wrote a letter to introduce Mochima Memphis to Shinagawa Yajiro of the Foreign Ministry in Tokyo. Hayashi wrote that Memphis is a friend of well-known British painter Whistler. It is obvious that Hayashi was aware that the painter was active in the forefront of the artistic world. In the debate over the concept of bijutsu, a dispute between Hayashi and Toyama Masakazu, professor of Tokyo Imperial University, became well known in Japan. While Toyama thought that the problem with contemporary painters was the subject of the paintings, Hayashi argued that the main issue was the acquisition of the technique and indicated the importance of plastic art. Hayashi's 1895 lecture entitled On Dr. Toyama's Speech was meant as a confutation of Toyama's speech, The Future of Japanese Painting, held at Meiji Art Society. During the lecture, while discussing the definition of bijutsu, Hayashi said, The English painter Whistler produces unprecedented landscape paintings with musical terms and colors in the title. And when he held exhibitions in London, he opened the eyes of all the doctrinaire artists. Then Hayashi continued, Painting is like music to please the eyes, that is to say, it is the harmony of beauty. And art is to feel things and bear them in our hearts. Art is full of feelings and emanates towards the outside. Hayashi's discussion reminds us of a phrase from Whistler's The Red Rag. Art should be independent of all claptrap, should stand alone, and appeal to the artistic sense of eye or ear, without, in, without confounding with this, with emotions entirely falling to it, as devotion, pity, love, patriotism, and the like. All these have no kind of concern with it, and that is why I insist on calling my works arrangements and harmonies. 
Whistler's use of musical terms was derived from his artistic thought as an estate. He arranged composition, space, and a harmony of color to attain art for art's sake. Just as a Hayashi saw Whistler's works as beauty of harmony, Japanese writers mentioned at the beginning of this paper, inspired by the sensuous quality and harmonious color of Whistler's works. Although Whistler was known in Japan during his lifetime, his aesthetic theories only began to circulate widely after his death in 1903. In the Foreign Britain section of Bijutsu Shinpo of October 5, 1903, Whistler's obituary was reported, and he was described as an extraordinary person in the contemporary art world. In 1905, art critic Sakai Gisaburo published Whistler, a critical biography, in a magazine called Sketch. Sakai described Whistler's art, Whistler, as a prominent figure in the history of the 19th century painting and added that he thought Whistler should really be considered. An extraordinary figure in modern painting history. Sakai also stated that Whistler's rejection of moral and anecdotal meanings from his works was particularly important in order to pursue the beauty of the harmony of colors and the beauty of the style. Then he wrote about Whistler's aestheticism by referring to t e n o g r o c lecture. And the gentle art of making enemies, and explained how Whistler had loved Japanese art and had been influenced in particular by Hiroshige and Hokusai, whose techniques he had put to good use. Sakai also observed that many of Whistler's artistic principles were suggested to him by Japanese art and pointed out that he, the works. Sorry, pointed out that the, the works Whistler produced by establishing a unique style influenced by Japanese art shocked the European art world. As already mentioned, in the minds of those Japanese who introduced Whistler to Japan, he was a contemporary painter. It was reported in h o s e n that Japanese pupils of a French painter, Lafayette Collin, And Jean Paul Laurens first introduced Whistler to Japan. <clears throat> Indeed, Western style painter Kume Keiichiro, who went to Paris and studied under Raphael Collin, was one of the earliest figures who wrote articles on Whistler. He stayed in France from 1886 to 1893 and played a leading role. In the Western style painting during the Meiji era. In December 1904, he published Whistler vs. Ruskin and the Origin of Impressionism in Seika. This article was republished in February 1905 in Myojo. Kume also wrote a biography of Whistler for Kohu. Kume presented Whistler's life and works in the,、uh, in the article, published in three parts and titled An Aspect of Whistler's Life. In these articles, Kume provided a detailed biography of Whistler and analyzed his works carefully. He also pointed out the influence of Japanese art on Whistler's work. Kume, who was a painter himself, with regard to these paintings for a foreign atmosphere, turned his attention to the colors of the original of, of the Oriental objects, writing, Whistler just gathered novelties to try to achieve a harmony of unusual vivid colors. Kume concluded that Whistler hadn't painted his Oriental works with an understanding of Japanese art, 
but instead painted them out of simple eccentricity, using items such as Japanese lacquerware and ceramics as the materials for still life. He did point out that Whistler's Japanese taste didn't stop at the simple foreign atmosphere. The painter instead continued his research on Japanese taste with a pure spirit, and while a curiosity towards novelties can be noted until 1867. From then on, he chose, analyzed, and interpreted elements of Japanese art and elaborated principles based on careful considerations. Specifically, Kume identified Hiroshige's influence in the way Whistler drew the horizon higher in pictures showing the sea or rivers, and in his night scenes, in which fires go off against the night sky. Kume noted how the higher horizon in Whistler's bird's eye view painting wasn't the result of the painter being internationally aware of Japanese art. Whistler used to, see, used to seeing Japanese prints had derived at those representations naturally, and in fact, this perspective existed in the West too, even though it wasn't customary to employ it. Whistler's interest in Japanese art moved from the bird's eye view compositions and paintings full of foreign atmosphere to the harmony of colors, eventually leading him to paint a series of nocturnes, known as the tonal paintings in the 1870s. Kume explained how in the nocturnes the color scheme was fundamental and how they weren't meant to depict nature, saying they were spontaneous, eloquent celebrations and magnificent poetry of the darkness of the night. He also stated that Whistler loved the shadows as, as shadows and the dark night as dark night. He used the light of the fires to bring out the beautiful colors of the shadows and the dark night. It is worthy of note that Kume's article on Whistler Whistler vs. Ruskin and the Origin of Impressionism was published in Myojo in 1905. The inference that Whistler's works exercised on the literary world was the result of modern Japanese phenomenon, which began with Myojo of the blending of visual art and literature. The literary magazine Myojo, representative of Meiji Romanticism, was the magazine of the Association of Shinsha, New Poetry Society, based in Tokyo. The magazine was published between April 1900 and November 1908. It was self-defined as a magazine specialized in literature. The year Meiju was first published was the year when the exposition was held in Paris, and the Art Nouveau star grabbed the limelight. Western-style painters, such as Fujishima Takeji, who was much influenced by Art Nouveau style, contributed illustrations on the front page. Myojo tried to fuse literature and art and played an epochal role in the history of liter literary trends in modern Japan. Kume's article must have raised the interest towards Whistler's work and his art theory, and it is possible to think that, along with the widespread interest towards art in the modern literary world, it became the reason why Whistler's aesthetic thought was picked up in the literary works too. After three years of Kume's publication in 1908, Ishii Hakute, Western story painter and print artist, published a translation of Whistler's 10 o'clock lecture in Hosun, and 
Whistler's aestheticism became widely known in, Japan, in Japanese literary circles. Like Myojo, Hosun was a magazine which aimed to be a synthesis of visual art and literature. It was published between 1907 and 1910. The interaction between works of art and literature and the creation of a new genre of magazine was the purpose of, this, of the publication. Ishii Hakte was an editor of Myojo as well as chief editor of Hosun. They published not only their prints, but also literary works such as poems or short dramas. And Kinoshita Mokutaro, Kitahara Hakushu, those who read poems inspired by Whistler, were active as regular contributors. These young artists and writers such as Ishi Hakute, Kinoshita Mokutaro, Kitahara Hakushu, Sato Haruo, who were contributors of Hosun, loosely centered around the group of Pan no Kai, association of the Greek god Pan. As opposed to true to life, they preferred to write creative stories or evocative poems appealing to the senses, exhibiting human sensuality and decadent aestheticism set in historical times and exotic places. The opening of the country in the middle of the 19th century brought radical change to the Japanese social system, lifestyle, and culture. At the turn of the century, young artists and writers searched for the lost atmosphere of the Edo period around their environment, especially along the riverside of Sumida River, where Hiroshige had depicted nocturnal scenes. It was not simply retrospection for Edo. Rather, these younger artists looked at riverside of Sumida River, a subtle atmosphere of Edo, what it used to be in the old days, and found exoticism in it. Members of Pan no Kai were anti-naturalistic and promoted a new movement of the aesthetic tendency. Their interest was not only Western art, but also the lifestyle of the Western artists. Young artists in their 20s who never had visited Europe thought that they needed to have a kind of cafe like in Paris, so that the artists from various genres could come together and exchange ideas on art. They compared Sumida River to the Seine and gathered at the Western-style restaurant beside the river to discuss art. Thus, Whistler's Nocturne, inspired by Hiroshige, created some kind of exotic atmosphere, a mixture of old and new for them. In the world of Japanese modern literature, works of Whistler, inspired by Japanese ukiyo-e, stimulated a kind of exoticism as Kitahara Hakushu read the poem inspired by the painter. From the second half of the 19th century until the beginning of the 20th, Japanese was very popular in the West. And in Japan, Westernization was carried out as a mean towards modernization. In the Meiji era Japan, cultural control was implemented under the premise of westernization, and the word and notion of bijutsu were born as a translation of a western concept. In this period, Whistler turned his attention to Japan, while the Japanese artists, critics, and writers turned theirs to the West. The adaption and understanding of a different culture in the modern era were essential in the creation of a new culture in the East as well as in the West. Whistler met Kaneko Kentaro, a Japanese politician and bureaucrat at the Athenian Club in London in 1890. Whistler told Kaneko, 
but he would like to learn Japanese art, about Japanese art, but that there were no books he could read on the subject. He wondered if there was a Japanese artist who could possibly explain it. While Hosla made clear his interest in Japanese art, it is historical irony that Hosla did not know that he had been introduced to Japan as a contemporary artist by those who were involved with art in Europe, such as Hayashi and Kume. Moreover, he didn't live to see how his artistic ideas and works inspired by Japanese art in turn greatly impacted Japan, becoming a source of inspiration for Japanese visual, art, visual and literary artists of the next generation. Thank you.